So, um, Carlos, thank you, thank you for joining us. Um, before we we talk about uh, Genac, uh, I wanted to actually talk a little bit about uh, yourself uh, and your your previous experience because you have lots of year, years of experience working in the in the world of technology. So, how did you come to be part of a sector so and an, a, a sector and a business so so different from your previous experience? Well, Dave, I don't think there's so many years of experience. Uh, basically, I'm an engineer. I studied engineering in Spain, uh, and then I was lucky to join one of the um, top technology um, international companies in engineering software. This company is called ANSYS. is an American company. Mm -hmm. And then I was lucky to um, get some exposure to some of the most technological companies throughout the world. Um, making some, some uh, follow-up of them, like uh, Ferrari, um, Airbus, or more locally, Repsol in Spain. I was the uh, technical director of the company in Europe, so I also would uh, have the chance to travel around the globe to the US, to China, to India, etc. Uh, I also took some uh, initiatives I, I'm, I'm somehow proud of in education, so I was director of one master's degree in uh, engineering simulation that was an international one and, and it was kind of successful and um, at that time I, I also studied an MBA and then I joined GNAC to, to lead this project maybe we can discuss a bit more in detail about it. Mm -hmm, of course um, so you've been in your your current position at, at GNAC for about three years now um, right. over that time what would you say your kind of great as, as both personally and as a business your kind of greatest achievements have been in that period? Um, well, I think uh, when you're working on something that can be considered as innovative and, uh, and you're developing a solution that doesn't exist so far, the first goal you have is to make it a reality and make that reality something reliable um, that can be implemented in the world and, uh, and, and that you can produce that value you, you, you're looking for. And I think that's the main, um, that's the main achievement we've done so far is to make atmospheric water generation a reality in the world and uh, e a ready to use solution. And um, in order to get there, probably the most important things we've done are related to certification. So we develop technology, we implement products, but these products have to be tested and certified. This is so important for new um, solutions so they can be really used. Uh, other of the challenges we have been facing is the development of a market. We have a solution that is so known uh, throughout the world. We have to develop awareness and we have to develop the, let me say, um, sales channels at the end in order to get to the, to the end user. Uh, now we are present in over 25 countries, which is something we also feel very proud of. And this has been done thanks to a team and and I know everybody is always talking about the team but in in these kind of challenges is even more important because you're facing a hope for the future and you need to make that vision a reality for everyone in the team so throughout their skills knowledge and with this attitude of being brave and making that future a reality I think we have been able to have a team of people are uh, highly motivated to achieve that goal of making these solution a reality, mm -hmm. and and you just mentioned that uh, you know you're you're active in around twenty five countries now and and pretty much every continent uh, already. Uh, do you have any immediate plans for expansion in any country or, or area in particular in the in the near future? Yes, uh, as a as any new technology. And more especially in this world we live in today, where communication is so easy, uh, understanding of local regulations it's easier, is easier than in the past. And uh, getting to business relationship with other companies, the expansion is not so much regional, but in terms of a market. Yeah? And uh, when I was referring to new technology, um, part of your strategy needs to consider was going to be the the, um, the 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 analysis, the impression of the end customer with a new solution. And you know, some organisations are are afraid of changing anything. Mm 
And, and, and on the other hand, there are some other organizations that are keen on new technology. So this is kind of our, our roadmap. And uh, we have stations uh, that are uh, related to emergency response, where customers are governments, multilateral organizations, uh, armies, etc., NGOs, etc. We have expanded to the industrial uh, market with big companies in oil and gas sector, mining, construction. And our goal in expansion is to go to the more commercial market. And here you can think of, uh, you know, water dispensers in offices, in public uh, uh, facilities, even in houses. So our, our plans for expansion are uh, uh, market related to these commercial markets. Mm -hmm. um, moving on a little bit to the the actual technology and innovation behind your your products, it's it's a it's a really interesting process. We we saw how your your generators uh, imitate the the process of rain and use uh, condensed water from humidity in the air, and all of this whilst being compatible with uh, solar energy. Now. I think most people, when they think about generators, the, the immediate images that come into their minds aren't exactly ones of, of nature. It's a kind of a, an industrial mechanic imagery. Um, so it's interesting that your process, your method has so much kind of nature applied behind it. Um, why do you think it's important for our kind of water sources to have this um, natural root, and if not a root, at least a, a natural element? Well, uh, you've made me think about something I never thought about before, which is maybe we shouldn't call it generator because we know we're not generating water, which is transforming. Maybe we should call it transformer. We are transforming uh -huh. uh, humidity in the air into drinking water. In terms of uh, technology, these involves refrigeration technology, optimization of heat exchangers. It uh, involves water treatment and uh, air filtration, uh, software control, and all these kind of technologies. We have invested over 60 years of engineer uh, to develop this uh, since uh, 2008. Um, it is very important for us to make our solution sustainable. And to make it sustainable, um, what we want to do is to shorten the water cycle. So this water cycle of rain goes to the ground or underground, is collected, treated, distributed or transported, if bottled. Um, um, used, there is some waste, and then goes to the sea and evaporates and so on. We try to shorten it to make uh, the, the condensation, so the production or generation, at the same location at the consumption, where the consumption takes place. So we shorten it, that cycle. And to do it without using a lot of energy, so efficiency of the product is super important and second with renewable um, energy resources like uh, could be solar or, or, or wind energy mm -hmm. um, another quality of of the the gene process is of course the the, the water produced uh is a, is of an extremely high quality uh, which is particularly valued at the moment in the in the current situation that we're in with the covid 19 crisis i was reading today that um your water is kind of invincible against uh bacteria. Can you explain a bit about this and, and how the, the GNAC water is of a, of a higher quality and why? Yeah, and uh, this is the, the easiest question for me because the process is very simple. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the more complexity of this technology is on, is on producing it at a low energetic cost. That's the difficult thing. Mm -hmm. The water treatment is, is easy. You just need to filter the air properly. You just need to be cautious that all materials inside the machine are um, food grade, so you're not adding property to the water, and do some uh, water filtration stages, mineralize the water, and preserve it without bacteria, and we're using UV ultraviolet technology for that. Um, maybe something I could add is that we, are, we, we have just started a project related to COVID-19 mm -hmm. in collaboration with our group uh, in order to do air and water purifiers meaning uh, we are integrated in all of our machines. Uh, not only the water purification to make sure there are no viruses or bacteria in the water, but also as we are treating the air in order to um, absorb the humidity, we are also treating that air through filtration, UV and, and thermal shock to make sure that the air in the, in the space where the machine is located is also virus and bacteria free.
that's that's really interesting that you've got that kind of a uh, new new project going on to to react to the uh, to the current situation and i've seen it's not the only only time that you have uh, worked in kind of crisis management i've seen that you've had projects in reaction to the hurricanes in, in puerto rico yeah. also in in mexico in panama as well i believe That's um right, yeah. and i know also you have a, a unit which is specially designed for a uh, crisis response so i wanted to know um why do you think it is so important for companies like GNAC to be protagonists in in times of crisis like this like in puerto rico like in like in mexico and why is it important to you as well, personally? Um, you know what? I think um, companies should um, integrate into their NDA processes or whatever. Um, they should consist consistently plan and evaluate all the effects the company is having. And this historically has been on stakeholders on employees but i think it's time to make sure that all companies throughout the world are also considering their effects on its community and its community is global mm -hmm. from uh, ethical um, standards and on the environment so if we're gonna make money with this company we should make sure we are doing it with the rules that we want the world to be ruled by and this should include environment. I think this is a must for all companies today. Uh, returning a little bit to that that theme of, theme of sustainability, um, of course, your your products do have a high grade of sustainability, but also in in economic terms as much as uh, environmental terms. Uh, your method is more economic in terms of being uh, cheaper to to realize than than bottled water, than tanked water, than a, desalination um, methods, uh, especially in places where there aren't sources of water close. Um, why do you think that, that more global uh, organizations haven't taken on the method that, that you are using and using the type of uh, generators that you are using? Uh, do you think this is a change in the market we're going to see uh, in the near future? Or do you think it's going to take a lot more time for people to more universally adopt this, this technology? I think the short answer is uh, awareness. <clears throat> There's a um, hyperactivity in everything in the world today and it's so difficult. And I, 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 I imagine that in this COVID crisis situation, we are all overloaded with uh, information and uh, filter, uh, filtering it is kind of a challenge. So uh, for this technology, the limitation we have is awareness. And this is why our dissemination and, uh, and the commercialization development is so important because we need to get to the end user and make him understand the value he's going to receive from this technology. And uh, this value is mostly related to uh, cost, as you mentioned, to energy efficiency and to lack of um, and waste. Our enemy number one and i'm sorry to say that but our enemy number one is bottled water mm -hmm. because it has all of these yeah it has uh, waste production it has a lot of logistic needs and it has a high cost so this is our first target now having this said i think uh, as for many other technologies and you can think of transportation uh, or, or, or power generation there are many technologies available and there is no a single one that is given a solution for all scenarios. So the important thing here is to make sure that the one that has to decide, which is the technology he's using for need, is understanding the, 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 the values and the limitations of each of the technologies. And here, atmospheric water generation is not going to replace all sources of water, but is going to target some needs that are not well covered today. And these needs are mainly in emergency response or disaster relief in remote locations and in all those places where bottled water is used, basically. Fantastic. Um, you, you already spoke to us a little bit about um, your kind of contribution in, in wake of the current COVID-19 crisis. Uh, just as a matter of curiosity, of course, as, as individuals, we have all been affected in well, very similar ways by, by the current crisis all around the world. Uh, but maybe the variation 
is is a bit more wide in terms of how businesses have been affected. Um, could you tell us a bit about how how GNAC actually has been affected by the by the current situation, if if at all? Yeah. Well, we have a negative effect on one side, um, which is well, we started the year kind of very good in terms of sales achievement. Um, some decisions. Uh, of investments in this technology are being uh, delayed because of the COVID, because there are other urgencies. So that's the, the negative side. On the positive side, uh, there is a more, more uh, people is more conscious about um, um, safety of the air, of the water, and everything. And uh, this is an opportunity for this technology because it produces safe water wherever it's, it's used. So that is opening a market for us. On the other hand, and this is not related to the technology we're doing, as any company or any individual that is given some time to think, is a great moment to do all these things you're not doing because of the daily uh, workload you normally have. And uh, adapting the company to the type of uh, uh, response we should give to this, let me say, new world, adapting our processes, ad adapting our value we're generating, and also analyzing the market in order to um, refine our targets. Yeah? So in that sense, it's also been very positive. I'm a, I'm a positive person, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to have the tendency to go uh, and, and look at the positive sides. But, uh, but I, 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 I think I'm also realistic in saying that this technology uh, is going to have even more opportunities in this new situation. And uh, as a company, we're trying to prepare ourselves. So for example, uh, in two, uh, three weeks time, more or less, we open in new facilities. Uh, and these will include a very uh, uh, innovative laboratory focused on atmospheric water generators. So that will help us from now to have better products, better tested, and to do faster innovations. Yeah. So I think you have to use the resources you have in terms of time, money, or skills, or whatever you have. And this situation um, was a good opportunity to make sure we're using those resources and we're improving them. I mean, one thing we find very attractive about your business is it bears in mind these these two branches that we kind of talked about the 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 environmental and and then the social as well because uh, of your your sales uh, drinking water safe drinking water to people who may otherwise not have had that uh, opportunity. So speaking a bit more generally, given that you are a business who bears in mind both the environmental and the social, uh, both within your sector and outside of it. What fundamental changes do you think uh, businesses need to make so that they are also participating and contributing in, in these two, two facets of the environmental and, and the social? Um, I think it's a mentality. Uh, the problem of mentality is, is that it is very person dependent. Some people have a mentality, some people have other. To me, the, the, the way to achieve it is to integrate it as a, as a function of the company. And you need to organize your company taking, account, uh, taking these into account. And you need to put um, goals and uh, KPIs, or, or you, you have to measure. Uh, 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 um, versus these goals you've established, mm -hmm. how you are impacting on on the uh, socially and environmentally, and I think it's just a matter of integrating it into the into the working schemes of the company. Yeah, fantastic. Um, just to finish off, Carlos, thank you so much. Um, We'd like to speak a bit more broadly about leadership because, of course, we are voices of leaders and, and leadership is a, is a key part of, of, of what we talk about. Uh, and, of course, now more than ever in a time of, of global crisis, uh, good leadership is absolutely key. Uh, in the coming months and years, uh, as both countries, individuals, businesses uh, look to look for economic recovery, um, we'd like to know what do you think is is the kind of leadership we need in in mainly in the private sector what is the kind of leadership you would like to see uh, in the private sector and and in your your sector of uh, of uh, technology 
that's a difficult question you know mm -hmm. um we are very lucky everyone in our times to have so much information and we have information about the past and we can read about history and how leaders in other ages have reacted to me that's very important but we also have a lot of examples mostly with politicians because they always on the news from different countries how they are reacting and how they are being proactive also with the with the environment they they, they, they live in from my point of view it is there are three things that are very very important for a leader and the first one is related to communication and communication is not only informing others yeah and that's very important yeah you need to inform you need to make people understand the reasons and make people share the the the, the arguments and the reason why we're doing something but communication also involves being informed and to me that's a key thing today you need to be informed you need to have the real data and uh, avoid uh, getting draft into um, uh, prejudgments or, 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 or not so precise communications and then make your mind about it and decide. I think you need to be informed. That's the first thing. Maybe the second thing is related to knowledge. Um, we talk a lot about skills and if, if someone is, is intelligent or um, we shouldn't forget about knowledge. Um, we have need to have knowledgeable people and we need to empower these knowledgeable people to make decisions and and uh, about it we have a lot of resources knowledge um skills time etc it's important to decide where we are and these resources so this is the third thing the third thing for me is to have the courage and the willingness to decide and to assume the risks of the decisions you've made so these three things related to communication, to knowledge, and to capacity of decisions uh, are the most important things for me, uh, for a leader. Yeah. So this machine, what it's doing, is taking air from the back, is condensing water, condensation chamber, mm -hmm. then is treating it and storing it in a tank in the, in the lower part here, mm -hmm. and then you just click here, to serve water. I don't know if the image is going to be good. Okay. It's, yeah. it's coming out fine, yeah. yeah. So, and so this is our um, initiative to just use atmospheric water here in the office and not use plastic bottles and so on. So, with your permission. <laughs> You know, sometimes you have this feeling of living in a constant draft, mm -hmm. ex uh, waiting for the real thing to come. Yeah. So what I want is to avoid that feeling of one day I will, but to focus on what I'm doing today and making sure that with the resources I have, this knowledge, intelligence, uh, time or whatever each person has, make sure I'm producing a real value and not just spending time in front of a computer or whatever, yeah? And in, in this specific case of managing uh, GNAC, what I want is to make this technology, um, how can I say this, um, cover the right need uh, uh, we have in the world for it. Meaning okay. if mm -hmm. this technology can be using scenarios, I want first to provide uh, uh, an adapted solution for them, and second, to have these scenarios, these decision makers know about it and decide for this technology. So I want, what I want is to make all these a reality up to the point it makes sense. Yeah. Um, those initiatives, uh, those projects, that are going to have and are having an effect on the world is very important. So it's not only to do the job, you also need to communicate about it. And I think you're doing a very good job there. So thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you so, you much, so Carlos. much, Carlos. Thank you for your work.